Our next guest is no stranger to the IPO market, having spent nearly 10 years as Goldman Sachs' top software analyst. She recently joined InvestCloud, a software provider for the financial services industry, as its president and CFO, Heather Bellini, joins us here at the NASDAQ on set. Heather, welcome back to CNBC. Welcome back to Fast Money. Great Thank to have you, you with for us. having me. Thank you. Um, what do you make of this? How big is this window, in your view, for IPOs at this point? I, I think it's all going to depend on how well these go. And you've read about some of the steps that they're taking to ensure that they're successful. I think that's really important to investor confidence and the companies, you know, such as the one I'm at, that, that look to follow on that path down the road. So it's, I think it's, uh, it's really important to make sure that these go flawlessly over the course of the next couple of months. How do you assess the market? What does it look like from your standpoint and in this, you know, from the standpoint of investors looking at uh, maybe companies that are newer, may not have a, a set, a, you know, profitability at this point in stage, may have um, some, you know, uncertainty surrounding profitability with higher interest rates? So it's a great question. I think, look, the last 10 years or so, we've had free money, as all of you know, and it's really easy to do the next round when you've got free money and the, uh, the valuations just kept getting more and more eye-popping. But What's been really good about the last 18 months, I mean, it's good and it's bad, but the good that's come out of it is that we're building better sustainable businesses instead of growth at any cost. We're growing with sustainability in mind and not knowing that there's going to be another check around the corner. I mean, where I am now, I've got great backers like Clear Lake and Motive Partners that are able to give us the funding that we need to grow the business and capitalize on, on what we see as the opportunities ahead. Um, but but it does take, I mean, I, I think we, uh, we, we all probably got a little too lax in terms of our, you know, the efficiency at which we were allocating capital. So Heather, you mentioned the free money period over the last, you know, 10 years or so. When you right. think about over the last year and a half since the Fed started raising it rates, some of the biggest, like, you know, checks have been written to software companies in around AI this year when we've had the quickest move of interest rates yes. off of a zero interest rate bound. And you think about it, how do these companies grow into these valuations? We've seen 200, 300 million dollars minting companies at unicorn status in like a series mm -hmm. A. That seems kind of bubbly. So that is the one area I was going to say around AI where people are willing and making these big investments. And I think what they're doing is they're looking back on public cloud, and it really becomes an arms race, if you will, in terms of who's got the best large language models to be able to do this. So I, I understand what's going on there. I, I don't know how many of them are going to be winners, but obviously AI is going to be something just like the Internet's pervasive, and we used to not think of it that way if you were in the, you know, thinking the mid-90s or late 90s. AI is pervasive in people's products, and people probably had AI before they even knew it was AI, right? I mean, we've been embedding that type of technology into the products we have at InvestCloud for the last 10 years, but you didn't think of it as AI until probably the last year or so. We spent a lot of time talking about the consumer. From your seat, what does right. the consumer look like? Um, from, from my seat, I mean, I, I think it's probably not the area that I focus on that much. I mean, I'm much more enterprise focused. Um, in, in terms of what we're doing and go to market. So I'm probably not the best person to help you with that. Going back to the AI thing, I mean, you, you mentioned that a lot of companies already had AI. So when we hear companies now talking about AI on a conference call or whatnot, I mean, does your skepticism antenna go, I mean, do they go up and the alarm starts sounding off? Well, you can count, you, you start before? counting the number of times a management team might, right. might, uh, might mention it on a call. Uh, you know, Everyone skates to where the puck is, and I think it's, a bet. It's, it's really about trying to see where, how we're going to be able to take this technology and harness it and really do great things and, you know, digitally transform even more than what we've been able to do by leveraging this type of technology. So I, I understand why, you know, everyone starts mentioning it, mentioning it on their calls, and it gets to what you were just saying about the valuations of some of these companies. But, um, but it's got a lot of promise, and, and I'm sure we'll transform industries more so than we ever thought possible. So, so Heather, let, let's talk about enterprise then. And let's yeah. talk about, uh, you know, and you can look at this through the lens, maybe not necessarily yeah. as your former seat as, a, as an yeah. analyst covering mega cap tech companies, but to the extent that you are focused on the enterprise spend, where are we? There's been a lot of distractions about where it was going to be. Maybe it's getting pulled into AI more than it should be. Who's suffering and, and who's benefiting? So I think first and foremost, what we see in our business is and we sell to tier one financial institutions down to small RIAs, uh, there is a slowdown in spending. And 
you know, people's budgets are getting scrutinized. It's hard to see that not happening, given what's going on with the markets and what happened with financials in the first quarter. So it is harder. I mean, the, there's always been a focus on ROI, but the, it's, it's when you can start delivering the ROI. So people are more interested in, I would say, land and expand type deals than necessarily doing these large transformational deals that might take three to five years to get payoff. They want to do them in more bite-sized chunks. So there, there's a lot of interest in if, if you've got a solution that can help transform someone's yeah. business and help increase share of wallet and, you know, change the experience that you're having with your customer. But it is it, it's not, I would say, as easy as we might have seen it a few years ago.